All right, let's take a look at how we can tell from f prime of x uh, what's going on with the graph of f of x. So take a look here. We see that on this portion of the graph, f of x is increasing. Then f of x is decreasing. And then f of x is increasing again. So on the parts of the graph where f of x is increasing, if we draw the tangent lines, Okay, that wasn't a very good one. If we draw the tangent lines, we see that all of their slopes are positive. Okay, again on this side. We draw the tangent lines to the graph of f where it's increasing, their slopes are all going to be positive. Okay, so since f prime of x tells us about the slopes of f of x, that means that if f prime of x is positive, then f is increasing. OK, similarly, if we draw the slopes of the tangent line to the graph where f is decreasing, we see that they all have a negative slope. That means that if f prime of x, again, it's measuring the slope of the graph. If the slope is negative, it means f prime is negative. So if f prime is negative on an interval, the function is decreasing there. OK, if we have a, a slope, if f, of, if f prime of x is equal to 0 on an interval, that means the slope of the graph is always 0 on that interval. So that means that f is going to be constant on that interval. Okay, So let's do an example here. OK, here I've drawn the graph of some derivative, the derivative of some function f of x. And I want to use the graph of the derivative to see where f of x is increasing and where it's decreasing. OK, we know that if f prime of x is greater than 0 on an interval, then the function's increasing on that interval. So to find out where my function is increasing, I'm going to figure out where f prime of x is greater than 0. Greater than 0 means above the x-axis. So for all of these values of x, the function is greater than 0. I'm sorry, f prime of x is greater than 0. For all of these values of x, f prime of x is greater than 0 as well. If x is less than negative 2, so for all those values of x, or between 1 and 3, f prime of x is less than 0. Okay, so here, it's f prime of x is negative, means less than 0. Here f prime of x is positive, that means greater than 0. So f of x is going to be increasing when the graph of f prime is above the x-axis. So that's going to be from negative 2 to 1. Union, 3, and from there on, f prime is above the x-axis. So union, 3 to infinity. So that's where it's going to be increasing f of x is going to be decreasing when f prime is below the x-axis. So from negative infinity all the way up to, but not including negative 2, f prime is below the x-axis, so f prime is negative, and f is decreasing. Um, then again, f prime becomes negative after 1 until we get to 3, at which time f prime is 0. So here, f is decreasing from 1 to 3. So ignoring concavity, if we were to get a graph of f, we would see that it's, it's, uh, it's falling from negative infinity to negative 2. So falling until we get to negative 2. Suppose that's negative 2. So then it's growing from negative 2 to 1. So I'll call that negative 2. I'll call that 1. So it's growing from negative 2 to 1. Then it falls from 1 to 3. So maybe it goes like that. And then it grows again from 3 to infinity. Okay, So this right here could be the graph of a function that has this derivative. Again, if we, um, I didn't even bother looking at concavity right now. Just looking at the increasing, decreasing behavior. All right, now let's take a look at what f double prime tells us about the graph of f of x. If we, first I want to define concave up and concave down. Okay. 
So let's take a look at this part of the graph. I'm telling you that this part of the graph is concave down. So let me tell you how I can figure that out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw tangent lines to the graph for these values of x. And I can see that in all these cases, the graph of the tangent line lies above the graph of the function. Above means if I draw a vertical segment, it's going to hit the tangent line before it hits the graph. Okay, so if that's true, if the graph of the tangent line lies above the graph of the f of x, that means the function is concave down there. Okay, similarly, if I look over here, I'm telling you that, that the, the graph of the function is concave up there. Now let me draw some tangent lines to show you how I can tell. And you see that when I draw the tangent lines, they all lie below the graph of the function. And I know they lie below the graph, for example, because if I go here and I draw a vertical line where I'm looking from top down to bottom, that vertical line hits the function before it hits the tangent lines. And so that means that the tangent lines lie below the graph. Okay, So for all of these x values here, the tangent lines to the function lie below the graph of the function. And therefore, the function is concave up there. OK, now I'm going to look at some properties of these two cases to see how derivatives might help me identify those. Let's start with the concave down part. So we already know that the slopes of the tangent lines lie above the graph. If we take a closer look at the trends of those tangent lines, so here we have a very positive slope. Here the slope is still positive, but not quite as much. Here we have a slope of 0. Over here, we have now a negative slope. So the slopes of the tangent lines are decreasing. We go from large positive to 0 to negative. OK, well, well, let's see what this means in terms of derivatives. OK, if the slopes are decreasing, remember that f prime of x measures the slopes. So to say that the slopes are decreasing, is to say that f prime of x is decreasing. Well, we know from before that if a function is decreasing, then the derivative is going to be negative on that interval. So applying that to this case, if f prime of x is decreasing, that means the derivative of f prime of x is negative. That means less than 0. Well, what's the derivative of f prime? That's precisely f double prime of x. So if the slopes are decreasing, that means f prime of x is decreasing. That means f double prime of x must be less than 0. Over here, we start off with a negative slope, and then it's less negative, and then it's 0, and then the slopes are growing. So when the function is concave up, f prime of x, which, is a measure of the, which gives a measure of the slope, is increasing. Well, if f prime of x is increasing, then we know its derivative must be greater than 0, Okay, from our earlier discussion. Well, what's its derivative? That's f double prime of x. So f double prime of x has to be greater than 0. So what does f double prime tell us about the graph of f? If f double prime is less than 0, the function is concave down, okay? The graph of f is concave down. If f double prime of x is greater than 0, the graph of f is concave up. All right, this point here, where the concavity changed from concave down to concave up, that's called an inflection point, or a point of inflection. OK, so the point of inflection is where we change concavity. We either go from concave down to concave up, or we would go from concave up to concave down. So we would have a point of inflection there. So that tells us where f prime changes from increasing to decreasing, or vice versa. All right, let's apply these ideas to a graphing situation. OK, so here. 
we want to sketch the graph of a function for which f of 2 is 0 and f of 4 is 0. So that means that 2 and 4 are the x-intercepts. Okay, f prime of x is greater than 0 if x is less than 3. So from 3 and down, f prime of x is greater than 0. So that means increasing. Okay, f prime of 3 is undefined. Okay, so we can note that. And then f prime of x is less than 0 if x is greater than 3. That means if x is greater than 3, so for these, the function is decreasing. Okay, so for now, now for all x not equal to 3, f double prime of x is greater than 0. That means concave up. So at, at 3, it's neither concave up nor concave down. Then bigger than 3, we have concave up. Okay, so from negative infinity to 3, we are increasing and concave up. And we have to pass through 2. So maybe that's going to be something like this. Okay, so that's how I can get to 2. I'm increasing and concave up. And then I'm still increasing and concave up till I get to 3. And then after 3, I'm decreasing and concave up but I have to pass through 4. So decreasing means I'm going to fall, but I could fall like that. That would be decreasing and concave down. Or I could fall like that, decreasing and concave up. Okay, but we need to do decreasing and concave up. So that right there is the graph of the function. Get rid of this stuff. That's just kind of scratch work on the side. Okay, so this graph right here is a function that has this behavior. All right, let's do a little uh, graph matching here. Okay, so one of these is a function. One is its derivative, and one is its second derivative. So let me remember that if f prime of x is less than 0, then f is decreasing. If f prime of x is greater than 0, then f is increasing. And also remember that Less than 0 means below the x-axis. Greater than 0 means above the x-axis. Similarly, if f double prime is less than 0, then f of x is concave down. So if the graph of f double prime is below the x-axis, then the graph of f is going to be concave down. If f double prime is greater than 0, then f is going to be concave up. So if the graph of f double prime is, below, is above the x-axis, f is going to be concave up. Let me write these uh, findings down on the side. Okay, so if the graph of f prime of x is below the x-axis, f is decreasing. If the graph is above the x-axis, f is increasing. All right, if the graph of f double prime of x is below the x-axis, then f is going to be concave down. If the graph of f double prime is above the x-axis, then f is going to be concave up. OK, let's take a look at this function right here. We see that this function is growing, 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 growing until we get to right here. Then the function falls till we get to right here. Then the function grows. So if this is the function, then its derivative is going to be negative up until this point. I'm sorry, it's driven. If we're. Let me start over. OK, let's take a look at this function here. We see that this function is increasing till we get to right here. Then it decreases. Then it increases. So if this is the function, its derivative is going to be positive. So above the x-axis till here. Then it's going to be 0 here, because it has a horizontal tangent line. Then it's decreasing. So from this x to this x, the derivative is going to be below the x-axis. And then they have a you have a horizontal tangent line, so then its derivative is going to be 0. And then on this part, the function is growing. So now its derivative is going to be above the x-axis. If we take a look at this one, 
It has exactly those properties. So where f here has a horizontal tangent line, this function crosses the x-axis. So that horizontal tangent line crosses the x-axis. f prime needs to be positive here. And we see that, indeed, this graph does lie above the x-axis. So this function is positive for all of these x values. It needs to be, if it's the derivative, it needs to be negative between these two x values. And indeed, it is negative between those two x values. Finally, if it's the derivative, then it needs to be positive from this x value on. Because from this x value on, f is growing. Indeed, this function is positive from that value on. So right now, it's seeming like this is f. This is f prime. But we need to make sure by examining this function here. So to figure out if this is f double prime, we're going to look at the concavity of f. So here, we see that f is concave down until right around here, because that looks like that's around the spot where the tangent lines go from being above to below. So f looks concave down there and concave up here. Well, if f is concave down, then the graph of f prime needs to be below the x-axis. Indeed, for these values of x, this function's graph is below the x-axis. For this portion here, where f is concave up, the graph of the second derivative needs to be above the x-axis. Indeed, this function here, for these values of x, is above the x-axis. Okay, so this is going to be f double prime.